Hello everyone, I'm glad to be able to be with you this evening on our midweek uh, Bible study, April 15th. I would imagine that many of us, including uh, myself on this Wednesday night, uh, we have had some very odd thoughts, some very uh, even fearful thoughts about the coming days and uh, just this unexpectedness in, in the air, this uh, not knowing uh, what tomorrow might hold for our, let's say, our country or, or even for our church. And so it is with this uncertainty, it is with this anxiousness that I present the study for this evening, which will be on the topic of fear the topic of fear. I hope that you have a copy of God's Word with you. Uh, this will be a rather brief uh, study tonight, but I hope that you have your copy of God's Word, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And if you have your copy of God's Word, let's turn there together. It is our human nature to be Fearful. I believe that it is ingrained within us to uh, to fear things in the in the future, thoughts about what is what is coming up, and things in our lives, and loved ones we might have uh, in our lives now, but tomorrow are are facing uh, illness or disease and things that might uh, might take their lives any any day now. We fear. Uh, coming down with disease, we fear illnesses, and we fear the uh, the thought of dying and passing on. And and uh, most relevant and most prevalent today, we are fearful of of catching this uh, COVID nineteen, this uh, coronavirus. So we're very fearful. Uh, we're very fearful of that. I, I guess we are fearful as well that we're going to run out of toilet paper, or that we are fear fearful that we're going to run out of supplies and and so we are pe we are people that are prone to fear and I believe in some regard at least for the uh, for the human thought and for the the consciousness of, of humanity it is what I would say a now natural thing to fear and when we really strip away all of our tough veneer uh, all of this uh, go get them type attitude I, I've got everything under control I've, I've got this myself uh, uh, you know being prideful and I don't there's nothing wrong with with taking the reins of, of life and, and working and you know and trying to supply for your family and and in some regard being self-sufficient in the way that we work but once we strip away that t that tough veneer that go get them type attitude of humanity we really do find when we pull back the layers that we really are a fragile lot of people and regardless of how resilient we might think that we are regardless of how tough we might think that we are as well we are creatures that are prone to fear but we do not have to live in fear we do not have to have our lives categorized as a person that is a worrisome person or a coward or a fearful person as well. You know, in the Word of God, which is in times like this, it is our remedy, it is our refreshment, it is the balm that we apply to our lives, it is, it is our... Uh, our ease it gives us it gives us it gives, gives us ease it's it's sweet and it is as bitter at the same time bitter sweetness of the word it confronts us on the very humanistic level of who we are I mean a strict study of anthropology uh, really does dig to the heart of man and our inability uh, to to uh, to meet our own needs and so we need we need we need the Lord and so you will find in the, in the Word of God this phrasing or this simple proclamation. 
it is uttered repetitively in the word of God. It is the proclamation, the command to fear not. It is used 33 times in scripture. It begins with Genesis chapter 15 as the Lord is addressing Abram. And then it ends in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 17. And that word is Jesus affirming these words here. That he is the Alpha, the Omega. He says, fear not, fear not. I am the first and the last. The be all, the end all, the Alpha, the Omega, uh, the eternity, past, eternity, future. The very reason, the very Logos, the word, the reason for creation itself. So, fear not, trust in me. So the command is used uh, repeatedly in scripture over and over again and it is used to remind God's people to rest and then to lean on him and to lean on his power. When we finally do get to meet together hoping not too long off into the future but I will say this if we have to meet this way we as God's people will push through. Uh, persecution, hardships has always been uh, where the church seems to thrive. And so we'll do fine because we'll lean on Jesus, right? We'll lean on the Lord. When we finally get to meet together, uh, I can't imagine what that day will, you know, what will be like. Uh, I have some ideas. Uh, I know that we're going to eat. I know that we're going to spend a lot of time here on that first Sunday back. We might even have a Sunday evening service, a Sunday evening singing where we'll come together like a fifth Sunday singing and, and worship and worship the Lord. We might worship all day long and I imagine that would be quite all right with me and many others as, as well. But when we meet together, we'll come together, we'll say hello, hi, how are you? We'll shake hands, we'll hug one another's necks. I'm sure there'll be some tears that will be shed on that day. I can imagine when we began to sing the songs of worship that morning, I believe it will be an outpouring. I believe the waterworks will flow that morning. And so we, we definitely want to think of some songs that will be just robust in theology and robust in Christology and sing to the top of our lungs that day when we come back. So we'll meet one another. Hello, how are you? We'll shake one another's hands. But we hardly ever, if, if even never, greet one another with fear not. I can't remember the last time that I saw someone and, you know, I shook their hand and said, fear not. How are you today? You know, I rarely ever, if never, have used that term. And, and then we find in Scripture... That this greeting is used when God addresses his people. So in this fear not, there is encapsulated in this phrase meaning about the character and nature of God. And so there is something even in those two words, fear not, that we understand about the character and the nature of the good God that we serve. It is in scripture that we find this phrase because we know that the Lord God, he knew that humanity is a very fearful, a fearful lot, a fearful creation. So he used this fear not as a greeting and, and that was even more than just a simple greeting. As I mentioned, it was something that was engrafted with the meaning and character of a good God. It, it was an implied statement about the Lord, but in somehow even was emphatic in, in, the, in the understanding. Why should I fear not? Well, because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not fear. Uh, the Lord is, is good, he is long-suffering, he is slow to anger. Right? Full of mercy. So I know something about the character and nature of God. 
by simply hearing the word, fear not. Yes, he is to be feared in the regard that any moment, at any time, in his justice and him being a just God, he can take any one of us out of this earth any time that he felt like and still, and still would be justified in doing so. And so there is a healthy fear there. Uh, but a lot of times when the word fear is used in the Bible, there is a sense of reverency. But this is a simple uh, being terrified or trembling or fearful before the presence of the Lord. Meaning, yeah, you've got every right to be trembling. You have every right to be uh, fearful in the sight of God. But in this moment, fear not. Uh, fear, fear not. Yes, he is to be feared. Yes, there is a healthy fear about, uh, about the God that we serve who is a just God who will just justly judge sin and, and wickedness and righteousness at the same, the same time. At the same time, he is a loving and long-suffering and compassionate God. And there is a balance of how we study the character and nature of who God is. Meaning that we understand something about his long-suffering, his mercy, his loving kindness. And at the same time, as we learn who God is, we balance that he is a God also to be feared. If we sin, he is absolutely a God to be feared. Now... Even though we are prone to being fearful from time to time, we as Christ followers who are in Christ Jesus, we have assurance in the risen Lord. Okay, just as sure as I am that Jesus walked out of the grave on the third day and reigns forevermore, makes intercessions for the believers, he's our advocate just as I have that assurance in the risen Lord, I also have assurance that when this life is over, that I'm going to see Christ because he is my treasure. My assurance is in him. You know, I often hear people ask this question as far as the COVID-19 is concerned. Why is, why is, where's God in all this? Well, God is the same place he's always been, ruling and reigning forever and ever. And do we think for one split second that we deserve anything else but to be refined and changed by God Almighty, even if he is using this COVID-19 virus to somehow do that? Do we think that somehow we deserve good and others don't? Do we think that we are above and beyond chastisement and refining? I think the, the question to ask is why have any good at all happened to us? Anyway, I believe firmly in the resurrected Lord and I have assurance in him. And so, even though that I am prone to be fearful from time to time, I do not live a life in fear. Uh, at least that I, I pray that my life is not categorized that way. Uh, I pray by God's mercy uh, that my uh, life would not be characterized that way. So I want to take a few moments this evening to just further our discussion of fear. And I would imagine there's people out there who's fearful that they're they're going to have a job when all this is over. Or how they're going to meet, make finances meet. And God's people is pretty resilient uh, in terms of meeting one another's needs. Read the gospel. Um, read the account of, of Luke, uh, sorry, Acts chapter 2. Uh, read that account of how the church came together. And all those that were in need in the community of believers. They done what they needed to do. Whether it was sell possessions uh, to have funding to support one another we are a resilient people and so we will do what the Lord has commanded us to do in gospel community as we live out as we live out our faith 
Now, I want to talk about fear, okay? I want to take a few moments this evening to talk about, is it okay to be fearful? Is it, is it um, acceptable to be fearful? And so Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28, he said, fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body, soul, or soul and body in hell. And so, listen, if the government was up to something, you know, at the end of the day, I, my fear is not ultimately there. You know, is somehow, is there some conspiracy behind all of this? My fear is not from government. Uh, my fear would be that I would offend the goodness and righteousness of God. Uh, fear the one who, can, who is just in his action, who can cast you away from this life and be justified in doing it. Okay, so Jesus says, don't, don't fear, you know, don't fear them who can't do anything to your soul. Whether it be government, whether it be the state, whether it be in your employee. Now that doesn't mean to not be reverent to your uh, employer or uh, those that you work for, your authorities. Don't, don't go out and just be rebellious. I don't fear y'all. Now there's a, a, a level of wisdom that needs to be uh, inquired here, not just mere stupidity. Okay, and so we, we want to be wise um, in that as well. Jesus says, you fear the one... You fear the one who can ultimately, at any moment, at any breath, uh, he, can, he can cast the soul and how has the power to cast the soul ultimately into hell. Fear him. Fear God. Okay, so there's one moment where the Lord says, fear not. Don't fear the government. Okay, don't fear the coronavirus. Okay, use wisdom and, and do what you need to do to distance yourself from from any folks of, uh, that are infected. But ultimately, we don't fear man. We fear, we fear God. So I want to speak specifically tonight on the command to fear not um, in, in reference to, uh, to letting this predicament that we are in and other predicaments leave us in a crippling fear. Paranoia might even be a better word uh, to use in this case. So I want to, I want to look at this command to fear not, but more importantly, if we are not to fear, and the command to fear not, then how do we keep from fearing? How do we keep from having our lives being eat up with anxiousness and being characterized as somebody who is always fearful, always looking over the shoulder, always paranoid, Somebody's out to get me. Okay, so I want you to, if you have your Bibles in 2 Timothy chapter 1, if you hold your place there, I'm going to pray for us, and then we're just going to walk through a selection of Scripture, and I'm not going to be very much longer after that. So let's, uh, let's pray together, and then we'll look at these verses, and we'll find our key verse in verse 7, chapter 1, in the second letter addressed to Timothy. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for the day today you have given to us to make much of the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that we have done that today, even in isolation of our homes. Whether it was a phone call to someone in need, uh, Lord, whether it was a kind word over the phone or a text message or, or passing one on the road and, and waving to them and smiling, whatever it might be, Lord, a letter that might go through the mail or uh, maybe we have brought somebody some, uh, some nice delicious baked goods or maybe some coffee or something like that that shows appreciation. And, and so we're, we're thankful for being able to do such things. Uh, Lord, I do pray for us, all of us, Lord, who are trying to work through, through this uh, COVID-19 scare and, and to come out on the other side as victorious in Jesus. Uh, Lord, whether we meet here in this sanctuary again or where we meet in heaven, Lord, we know you're just, you're good, and you call, you're still calling people to yourself and you're still saving them. 
So we're thankful for that, Lord, and we worship you this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, what I want you to do, though, is uh, if you have any, any questions. Now, this is a pre-recorded. I recorded this earlier. Uh, it just is able, it, it allows me to get a better picture and a better quality on our midweek service. Uh, and what I want you to do is if you have any um, questions that you might have, that you might want to discuss let's let's throw those around in the comment section below and and we'll uh and we'll talk about a few of these uh, a few of these uh, questions that i pose as far as uh how do we overcome fear what are your daily practices uh, that help you to overcome uh fear and and how and what keeps you from being uh from being fearful i think that we'll come to a lot of the same conclusions that uh, it's important for uh, to be in prayer and uh, certainly important to to be in the word and uh, certainly in, important to uh, to fill our lives with the things of of the Lord so I want you tonight let's specifically think about this fear not command if you have your copy of God's word key verse verse 7 says for God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and love and of self-control and your King James Version will say of sound sound mind so I want us to go back up to verse 1 and let's read through verse 12 I want to get the feel for this chapter and I want to note a few things along the way so with verse 1 Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus we know according to verse 1 here is what we would would we would call a standard apostolic greeting from the hand of the Apostle Paul. He is called an apostle by Jesus Christ himself. If we rewind back into Acts chapter 9, we find that account as Paul, then Saul, met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Imagine in that moment. Now we talk about fear. Imagine in that moment being Saul, the persecutor of the church, being engaged by the righteous son of God who says, why do you persecute me? Why do you kick against the pricks? Why do you kick against the thing, uh, my will, in fact? And so Saul is converted on the road uh, to Damascus and is, we, as we know, according to the Bible, uh, later becomes Paul. Who become prominent in writing the New Testament, a prominent preacher uh, next to the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Bible. Uh, Paul would be one of the greatest persuasive preachers uh, that, has, that, that is listed in the New Testament. And so now he's laying out his apostleship. I, the Apostle Paul, as he says, I'm called by Jesus. And so there might be some uh, in the background, I would imagine, as there were in uh, let's say the church at Corinth uh, and others that Galatia the church at Galatia who somehow doubted Paul's apostleship and there might even be some in the case here at Ephesus but he says to uh, to to Timothy you know given a standard greeting he's called by God uh, by Jesus he's called an apostle by Christ himself to Timothy my verse 2 my beloved child grace, mercy, peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Here's to his son in the faith, Timothy, uh, Paul being the one who led him to the Lord and he's like a spiritual father uh, to, to Timothy. Uh, Paul gives Timothy encouragement and, and insight. I can name a couple people right now, whether or not they'll watch this uh, well, I know one won't because he's gone on to be with the Lord. But I know another, who, if he watches this, I want to thank you for your ministry and your mentorship to, to me and uh, your discipleship to me. Uh, so one being Brother Mac McLean, uh, back in, both back in Jacksonville. Uh, Brother Mac pastored a church, uh, Christian Tabernacle there in Jacksonville. And I uh, learned much from Brother Mac. He was, uh, uh, you know, a very um, wise wise pastor and I learned much from him the other being brother Damon Lee in Jacksonville uh, North Carolina at Victory Baptist Church 
Uh, Damon had the privilege of, of coming. Well, we had the privilege of having Damon come and lead a couple of nights of revival this last year. And that was very exciting. It was good to see, uh, good to see he and, and his wife. And so, uh, again, thank you. It's always have to have, good to have, um, you know, people in your life that, uh, you know, that were, you know, mentors of yours and helped disciple you. And these two men, amongst, amongst others as well, but these two men are very prominent. And Paul was like the spiritual father to Timothy, being uh, that he led him to the Lord. Verse 3, I think, God who I serve and my ancestors. So there's a reason he mentions his ancestry with a clear conscience as I remember you. Okay, so he's bringing up this, your, your heritage, your ancestors, you know, thank your mom, thank your grandmother for bringing you up in the ways of the Lord. Thank you parents for bringing your children up in the ways of the Lord, your grandchildren in the ways of the Lord. Uh, whoever you are a guardian over bringing them up in the ways of the Lord. Paul goes on to write, I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. And uh, as I remember your tears, I long to see you that I might be filled with joy. There's something I think that we can resonate there uh, in a more relevant reminder uh, that uh, we long to see one another and it might be that when we see one another, we will be filled with joy and we might even cry as well when we come back to meet uh, in, the, in the church. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first with your grandmother Lois and then your mother Eunice. And now I am sure it dwells in you um, as, as well. So he reminds him first of his heritage, his heritage, Paul's heritage. And then Timothy, by mentioning his grandmother Lois, and his mother Eunice and how they were faithful uh, women of God and because of this great affection that he had towards Timothy he he then sets him aside once more to mentor him and to encourage him to to press on and he encourages Timothy to lean on the promise and the gift that he has been given Lean on what you have been given by God. And what is that thing that you have been given by God, that you have received, that being of faith? It is from God, and this gift leaves no place for, for fear. And so we see this uh, in verse 6. He says, I, I remind you to fan the flame, the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So this would be a, uh, what we normally would see as an ordination, a calling, a, almost like a passing on uh, of sorts, a recognizing, a recognition of the gift and the calling on Timothy's life. And so he says, I remind you, fan that, that gift. That is the gift that God has given to you that being of, of faith. Now, how do we know this? For he says, for God gave. What do you do with a gift? You give it to someone or you receive a gift. For God gave, that is the gift, us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and of self-control or a sound, a sound mind. Verse 8 says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. So we don't have to have fear about testifying in the Lord, nor of me, uh, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who saved us and called us to a holy calling. Not because of our words, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began and which now has been manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, our Messiah, who established, who abolished, rather, death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Finishing up the sentence, very long sentence. For which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do but then Paul goes on in one more sentence he says but I am not ashamed <laughs> we don't have fear 
right? Don't be ashamed. I'm not ashamed for I know that whom I believed and I am convinced that he is able to guard, uh, guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Now, I am just kind of simple in all of this way of thinking. But until God is finished with us, we've got work to do here. And when, God, when, when our work is done here, uh, the Lord will call us, call us home. Uh, we're always learning. Okay, but there's nobody who's ever reached this plateau of enlightenment. Uh, there, there's always a need for learning God's word and getting in God's word and be reminded of God's word. So there's a difference in being reminded of God's word, okay, and knowing it. So we can know it. Oh, yeah, I remember now. I remember that. So being reminded of the goodness of God, to be reminded to be a testimony of who God is, to be reminded of our faith, to be reminded that we should not be and will not be ashamed of the gospel by which we have been saved and by which we proclaim. Okay, and so I really do love that because I hear that quoted quite, a, quite often. God gave us a spirit of, not of fear, but a power and love of sound mind. That's the gift. It's faith that God has given to us. And, and by the way, these are all elements that we find of one and characteristics of one being born in the, whole, in the Spirit of God and exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit. We don't have faith, but we have fear. We have power, not in ourselves, but in, in Christ. And there is something about love in the body of Christ. Uh, I'm reminded of that song, we will, uh, we will know one another by our love. Okay, you know that we are Christians by the love that we have for one another. That's found in 1 John. We'll, we'll be known by our character as Christ followers by how we love on one another and how we love Jesus. And then to have a sound mind or self-control. There's almost something otherworldly about a Christ follower who can hold his tongue uh, when otherwise we would just let it fly, right? There's something about a Christ follower who has stability in the way that they think and in the way that they speak uh, that seems to make the world scratch their head and say, well, what gives? To where a person can forgive someone who is unforgivable and the world just does not understand that level of forgiveness, does not understand that level of, of love, does not understand that level of self-control. These are gifts that God has given his Church. Now, they're not, they're not all perfect in the way that we exhibit them, but we grow in how we love God and love one another. We grow in our self control and we grow in our, our patience and we grow in our faith. We grow in our bravery and being courageous and casting off that characteristic, character, characteristic of being fearful. And so, Paul, this one word that I think Timothy can stand on here, other than the gospel, of course, is to fear not, be bold in the gospel that was given to you as it was given to me. Be bold and proclaim that gospel without fear and do not be ashamed. Where is God in this coronavirus? He's, like I said, he's where he's always been ruling and reigning and this is just one of a, of many episodes in the world and in world history where God has used the things in this world to draw people's attention to himself now we know ultimately that that is the holy spirit but people begin to think of spiritual matters when they think that there are dire situations in the world and then may they grab a hold of God's word and then May as they read the word, the Holy Spirit illumines their heart and mind to the person of Jesus. And then by special revelation, God might save them. Now, I also want you to know that through adversity, whether it be coronavirus or hardships, uh, that God is, let's say, tapping people. But in a coronavirus, nobody is going to see this virus and say, without any other revelation, I need Jesus. Okay. They're going to know that something otherworldly might be happening. 
And it might draw them to the word. It might draw them to hear the word. To hear the word preached or taught. And then as that word is preached or taught, the Holy Spirit begins uh, illumining the word and will save that person. So we have nothing to fear in terms of eternality. We're in Christ and forever we'll be in Christ. Listen, guys, I'm going to pray and then we'll, um, you know, we'll, we'll end tonight's Bible study. But if you have any comments or any questions, uh, you know, put in the comments below. Uh, what, is, what is the thing that you do as a Christ follower that helps you overcome being fearful? Uh, maybe it might be talking to your spouse that helps both of you are Christ followers and you get encouragement there. Maybe it's, maybe it's just simply reading a psalm a day or something in the Proverbs or maybe it's something in the Gospels that gives you hope through the day or maybe it's your prayer time in the morning or something like that. Or maybe it's hearing, uh, listening to a sermon or hearing, uh, listening to a, a Sunday school uh, lesson or a podcast or something that might bring out the Word of God. So comment below and, and uh, let, me know, let me know how you... Uh, how you battle this, uh, this thought of being fearful. And when the Bible says, fear not, we've got nothing to fear, for the Lord is in control. There's one more thing I want to mention, and then I'm going to pray for you. Uh, keep in mind, we are still bringing worship Sunday morning with Sunday school at 9 on Facebook, and then at 10 o'clock, also on Facebook Live, we'll stream our morning service. Uh, this coming Sunday, we'll be back into the sanctuary. But right f following, right behind the morning worship, probably somewhere around 11, 15, we will be having an interactive uh, Bible study, Sunday school class for kindergarten through sixth grade. Now this will be a little bit different than what we have been doing. We want it to be interactive for children and parents. And so we'll set up a few questions uh, that will be in ingrained, in integrated within the within the video and so you'll be able to pause that video and and uh, and search the scriptures together as a family using using that outline okay so I'll be talking about that a little bit more Sunday morning uh, as uh, as we come and meet together virtually uh, but I want you to be aware of that as well listen I'm going to pray for you and I do pray that the Lord will bless you and uh, that he will he will indeed begin to refine away this spirit of fear. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the word that we search today. Paul writing to his young son in the faith who tells him to stand firm on his faith and to be not ashamed of the gospel and to fear not. Lord, I pray that as we read those words, all that we know that we, that, that we must fear is the judgment of a holy and righteous God. But because you have given us Jesus, we have peace in him. Because we, have, we are in Christ, we are justified, and we are forever thankful and grateful. Uh, Lord, I do long for the day when we'll be able to come and meet again in the, in the assembly. And until then, Lord, I pray, I pray, Lord, that you will use each and every one of us in a great way to fulfill the kingdom work. And we love you and thank you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Any questions you may have, feel free to call the church office, 792-1342, uh, or you can also call my cell phone at 252-862-6427. May the Lord richly bless you.